The history of sports cards goes back over 100 years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. So we are here in Missoula. It is a beautiful morning. I'm headed to the hotel right now to grab Tyson. You haven't met him yet. He came down from Canada. He's a great friend of mine, a good collector. I'm also gonna meet Mike at the card show today. He's a vintage expert coming up from Texas. Both of them are coming to Missoula today to enjoy this card show with me. Hey, welcome. <laughs> you know, I, I tell people all the time, right? Go look for collections, you know, classified ads, Craigslist, but a lot of times people don't think about card shows as being a, an opportunity to go find really good deals. Right. Do you, do you think you're gonna walk in and find really good deals that maybe you wouldn't find well, in, in attics and stuff? What's yeah. uh, I think I think to your point, I, I think the collection idea, there's probably more room for deals. So I think yeah. a lot of time when you're at card shows, people are pricing things appropriately and you're not gonna find the steals, but at the same time, there's opportunity to make deals. Yeah, as you're coming out of a pandemic high, and now you have people that are kind of feeling the pain of dropping prices. Right. Bundle cards. Yep. Bundle as much as you can, wait till the end of the day. Yep. Never pay sticker. So Tyson's a friend of mine I met a couple years ago through the hobby. He's, he's about five hours north of me up in Calgary, Canada. And today's the first time he's actually attending a card show in America ever. And so I'm excited for him to come down, even though it's in Missoula and it's not as big as other card shows, for him to be able to enjoy it and for me to enjoy it with him is well worth getting him down here today. We got the whole crew in Missoula, Montana for a show that we are excited about, hosted by Zootown Sports Cards. Missoula Card Show, let's do it. Do it. I'm looking for Bobby Witt this morning. I'm right in front of me. I've spent a lot of time on eBay and some other places, and I can't find an exact corner. I mean, it's a solid shot that could be a pop one, just because yeah. it's not many people I mean, with grid. I just... That's stellar. That's a really good one. That's a stellar card. This place is busy, it's hopping, lots of great dealers, great mix of stuff. There's vintage baseball, there's football, basketball, you name it, great mix of stuff. And the coolest thing is there are tons of kids walking around here. It is fantastic to see the youth and people helping out. They're doing a scavenger hunt for the kids. So they're running this really well. This is a neat, neat show. A Brady, have you seen 310 three subs? 310 subs. Doesn't that hurt to see a nine on it though? So With 310 subgrades. I got a Frank Robinson autograph on card. Great set, Donner's Classics. I paid $20 for yeah. that. $20 for a Hall of Famer? Yeah, all day. Next time you're in Vegas and you want to hunt for some cards, go check out the awesome card shop. They're the hippest card shop near the Strip. Mention Chasing Cardboard and get a free bonus gift in your next order. Stop settling for normal and come be awesome at the awesome card shop. Let's get back to the show. You want to meet at 200, don't you? 200. 200? All right, I'll do 200 for these. Bob Gibson Auto. I snagged that before Mike got to it. Eloy. Eloy, Vlad. All right, next gym, 1100 bucks. Yeah. Super cool deal. A couple card Anthony Towns, Trey Young, Garland, SGA. You got the goods, man. We're negotiating on the LeBron rookie, which I do not have, in a 10. A Cooper Cup silver, a Justin Jefferson silver, a Justin Jefferson contenders auto and a sneaky good Disco Prism. Three's not gonna work. No, I can't, can't do three. Um, we, you've gone down a lot for me already, I know. Yeah. 3,300. 31, I would do it. All right, all right, we'll do it. 31. Yeah. I really like the Jefferson buy, that was a good buy. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what, in that, in that set, yeah. In terms of pricing, the fact, because you know, PSA is tough with autos. 
Yeah. And then seeing that Jefferson uh, Contenders Auto 10 for like right on a silver, I think the Contenders Auto all the way. All right, so we're wrapping up the sports card show here in Missoula, Montana. What do you think? I mean, compared to what you're used to in Calgary and Canada, was this an incredible? incredible I mean, this day? was a, it was it was awesome. There was so much stuff, so much thing to look through. I walked through two or three times. I do it again. Yeah. See, I like I see find something different every time. Even at the same table that I spent time at. So I think all in all, the selection was great. It's, conversations were incredible. The kids and the parents. It was, it was a lot of fun. The environment was awesome. Card shows are one of my favorite things to do. You never know who you're going to meet or what you'll find. The next morning, I had a sit down with Tyson at a local coffee shop to talk about how cool this Missoula show really was. Shows are interesting because it depends. You go in with an agenda, yeah. right? It's For me, it's build collection and find opportunities to, to resell stuff. Yeah. But depending on where you are, everything changes, right? Right. I mean, yesterday, I felt like it changed pretty quick. Yeah. It was just a different culture. There wasn't a lot of graded cards. Nope. There was a ton of kids, which gave a really sweet environment. Yep. And you had to you had to kind of flip the way you were thinking about the show. At least I did. I don't know if you felt that way. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, kind of went in hoping for some prospect stuff. I really want to get some Bowman stuff out there as we get closer and closer to baseball. And you know, with the new agreement, a lot of the prospects are becoming up faster. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of my play, but there wasn't much. So I had to kind of adjust, and I kind of adjusted more to my kind of football guys for next year route with all the free agency moves and stuff like that. So kind of just that's where my mind went in terms yeah. of sports. Yeah, that's that's the fun part about card shows, right? You. You go, you go look at addicts, you go you know, find good deals with friends. That's one thing. Yeah. But you, there is actually a journey that takes place when you go to a card show, right? Yeah. You have to really find a way to be strategic to chase certain cardboard, it's to find those cards and add them to your PC and, and find good flips. And yeah. I think the journey of, of that part of it makes it really, really fun. Yeah, definitely. The thing that stuck out to me, I, I did a deal with um, a couple young guys and he actually had a booth with his dad. He was a genius, right? The guy would walk up, I'd look at something, and he goes, hey, I have two other of this guy right here. Right. You know, and he knew comps off the top of his head. Right. And he was packaging stuff up for me, and I'm thinking, man, this guy's 13 years old. Right. And he's thinking like a business professional. Right. Right, he's building out a plan on the fly to, to, to close me. And like, a part of me was just, I want, to, I want these cards, but I, I want to support you being all in to this. Yeah, the hobby needs it. The hobby has to have it because yeah. they're the next generation and the more that we have behind us coming, the better it's gonna be long-term. So yeah. I think also just knowing that in your mind, you know, I'm 37, I love doing this. I want the six and eight year olds to love doing it too. So every time I, I put requests out to buy collections, I feel like the first thing I get is an email of pictures of all kinds of wax. I feel like in America, we have a junk wax problem. So you can see this is one corner of my garage and we have, I mean, really everything from 88 all the way up to 93, all sports. And this is really common. I run into this nearly in every collection. Back in the early 90s, everyone thought that, you know, holding sealed wax was just gonna be the ticket to, you know, pay their, their kids school, but, <laughs> Unfortunately, they printed a lot of it, and here I am sitting on a bit. The, the good thing is that there's a lot of these these boxes that when you open them, they're they're pretty fun to open with your kids. Maybe not a lot of high valuable cards, but uh, for the most part, it's a really fun era to collect. So if you come across this stuff, what you want to gravitate towards is late 80s, 89 specifically, Upper Deck, the Ken Griffey Jr. card number one, is the iconic baseball card of the 90s. And it's still a very highly sought after card, uh, especially in a high grade. I don't see any 89 upper deck sitting here, but you can still look through and find 89 tops and score and find King Griffey Juniors in, in those boxes as well. They're super fun to open, kids love them, and you get to search for an iconic player. Basketball, you're looking for Jordan, right? Early 90s Jordan stuff is always great. Any of the stuff that you see in here, like hoops, like Fleer, will have Jordans in it, so that's fun. Uh, and then in football, you're looking for the 89 Barry Sanders. You got Troy Aikman in that era too. Um, so there's some iconic players that you can find in these junk wax boxes. Hey, what are you doing? What do you think? Sorting through cards. <laughs> <laughs> All the time.
time, right? All the time. You know it. What's up? Well, I am heading on a little adventure. I'm up here in Denton, and I'm heading to meet with a guy named Billy. He is running an online business and wants to do, start doing some sports auctions, some online auction cool. stuff. And he has a bunch of sports cards that he wants me to check out. He really doesn't know what he has. So I'm going to hopefully go help him out. What do you think? I like it. As I stare at stacks of junk wax. Hopefully you're not walking into junk wax. So that is likely, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's all cool stuff. I'm excited just to see what he has and, and maybe help him out a little bit. All right, brother. Enjoy. Have fun. All right. See ya. All right. There you have it. No rest for the weary, right? Always chasing cardboard. Hey, Billy. Hey, Mike. Mike. Nice to meet you, man. Good to meet you, sir. Excuse hey, the mess. I'm doing a little reorganization oh, here. that's all right. Thanks for having me out. Absolutely. Let me look at your stuff Come here. on in. I, mean, I got these. I haven't, I'm not sure what these are, to tell you the truth. I haven't really looked too hard at them. Well, hopefully I can help you. Yes, sir. Yeah, feel free. Just I'll make some, pull out some boxes here for you to look at. We're pickers, we're collectors, or whatever. Uh, we go clean out estate sales, and we have clients who bring us stuff, or we go pick up stuff, or we go to their homes or their businesses, and we auction everything off for them. Tell me how you came across all this stuff. I mean, well, my wife and I, we have a, a business, it's AJ's Antiques and Auctions. So there's a online. It's called auctionspear.com. Auctionspear which is a platform we use. The name of our business is AJ's Antiques and Auctions. And we go in, everything uh, starts for a dollar. All the lots start for a dollar. And unless it's a vehicle, then it starts at $100. And if I go to a place I see for sale, I'll offer X amount of dollars for you know a bunch at once. Right. So I just never never got any collection of myself, but. Frank Thomas, the big hurt. That is Charlie Waters, Dallas Cowboys. Like someone would buy that. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. So I got a whole bunch of Nolan Ryan's. Of course, like you said, this is Texas, so. Right. You can always tell the pages how old they are because they're sticky. They're mm -hmm. like, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, I think I was watching the game when that happened. Yeah. So <laughs> Nolan Ryan hits Robin yeah. Ventura. Robin Ventura charges, charges the man. It's like what are you talking about? You don't charge Nolan Ryan in our house. And Nolan Ryan put the pound into him. Yeah. This is his rookie card, Nolan Ryan's first card, a rookie card, first card, always more valuable. People want his first card, right? right? And this is Nolan Ryan's. He happens to share it with Jerry Kuzman. And you can tell immediately, and it says reprint on oh, the okay. back. So you gotta be. Now all reprint cards, do they usually have reprint written on it? Yeah, most yeah. of them, yeah. okay. uh, but some of them don't. Like you, you would know immediately. Like I can tell this is a modern card. It was printed modern oh, by the way it feels. Not only is the signature important and probably the most important thing, the type of ball that it's on is pretty important too. Like th this is a little league ball. It's not a major league ball, right. which would obviously change. It changes the value dramatically. For this Spider-Man figurine as best I can here on eBay. So I'm looking for anything that'll tell me what it is. So we got Founder 2016 Spider-Man. That's, and you want to start with as few words as possible because that'll give you the, you're, you're casting the widest net. So there's that figurine right there, right? Yep. A whole bunch of them. Big difference between what people list something for and, and what, what it actually, actually sells, sells for. for. Yeah. <laughs> so are these like your childhood cards or are they? No, I actually, I, I don't personally have any childhood cards myself per se. So Billy's taking all of this stuff that most of us would probably just throw away. And he's turning it into cash, whether it's $1 or $5, Money's money. Billy's finding vintage cards in dumpsters, Mickey Mantles and Bob Gibson rookies, all kinds of stuff that he's already sold. That's the way to do it. So when you, whenever you find books somewhere, if you're out looking around and you see sports books, always look inside because believe it or not, all, a lot of times you'll open it up and the player that it's about will have signed the book or something. So always look for that. At Top Shelf Bricks, we offer all major sports, WWE, Star Wars, and all things pop culture. Top Shelf has you covered with certified Fanatics memorabilia and unique collections. Visit TopShelfBreaks.com and use code CHASINGCARDBOARD at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Click it to hit it. Now, back to the show. You name it, I mean, I've, I've found it, I've sold it. We found coach purses, brand new with tags on them, still in uh, the dumpster. Found money, jewelry. 
uh, just in these estate sales. Went in an attic one time and somebody said, I haven't even been in the attic. I got up there and uh, they said, whatever's up there you can have. Grabbed a box of records and there were seven old Beatles albums in it. Everything I do, I have to research and look up. That's what's taken me so long uh, to get to where I'm at right now with this stuff. But I don't consider myself an expert by any means on sports stuff. So it's a box inside of a box. Uh, uh, it's probably 10 to 20 bucks. Okay. Like that. 91 Donruss. Yep, that's 91 Donruss. So what all this stuff is, is junk wax cards. Okay. And that's because it was so overprinted from the mid 80s to the mid 90s. You just had so much of this stuff being printed. As a kid, I used to go with my mom to Sam's and there'd be pallets oh, really? of tops boxes and score boxes and stuff. You could just buy whatever you wanted to. And so they just made so much of it. It doesn't have a ton of value. I mean, he just had a lot of stuff that a lot of people have out there and that's stuff from the junk wax era. And the junk wax era really ran from the mid 80s to the mid 90s. Card companies produced cards in massive quantities. And so unfortunately, being overproduced just doesn't mean a ton of value. Doesn't mean it's not cool stuff, it is for sure. But there's just not a whole lot of value there. But people that were in middle school, high school and collecting cards in the 80s, even though it's junk wax, would love to open a box of this because it'll just bring back so many memories. And that's what cards do. That's right. what cards are for, is they are nostalgia and memories and wonder, you know, longing for better times kind of thing. So this box actually, these 89 tops, they go for 30 to 50 bucks online. Really? A piece, an open box. Yeah, yeah. So the best the way box. to auction it is off just the whole 100%, box. Yeah. 100%, hundred okay. percent. leave it just as it is. Put a picture of it and you want to put a picture of it where it's open so they can see all the packs in them. There. Like a picture like that. I learned some verbiage today that I'd never heard before. So, you know, junk wax, I, that's, that's new to me, so. So at the end of the day, even though we didn't find a lot of great stuff that we wanted to buy, it was still really cool to help him out, go look at his stuff, try to help educate him, give him some knowledge, you know, teach him some of the nomenclature around baseball cards and sports cards. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. All right, you don't see that every day. Turkey crossing. So this might look like chaos to most people, but it is controlled chaos, I promise. So when these boxes come in, we unload them from a, a collection. It's identify what we got, and then we start laying things out on the table by sport and by year, and we quickly get them into piles, whether we're gonna sort, whether we're gonna list, whether we're gonna send off for grading. And uh, pretty quickly we can move through, you know, millions of cards in a matter of weeks. So, so my advice to people, if you're storing cards long term, I mean, if you can afford it, buy penny sleeves for your good stuff, right? Put your cards in penny sleeves and storing them in like 3,200 count, 5,000 count boxes are great. It's easy to think like one touch, you know, mag cases will take care of cards, but a lot of times it, it doesn't take as good a care of your card as you hope. And like you can see here, some of these guys I buy collections from, I mean, they have, they have thousands of top loaded cards. And I mean, after 30 years, they're in great condition. David Price, 2007 Elite Extra Edition. David Price, gold rookie. Red, turkey red. Lariano rookie. I mean, dude, these are, this is killer. You're not as excited as me, I can tell. I mean, there you go. There's, there's some Aaron Judge rookies. This is the stuff that gets you excited, right? You're just digging through a mediocre collection and you find a, bo a, a binder like this. I mean, here's a Giancarlo Stanton rookie, his Bowman rookie, you know, Dallas Keuchel, Carlos Correa. This is good. This is a book I'm gonna go back and start uh, unpacking, probably listen to a lot of this stuff. I bought a million cards from a guy and he organized it by player. This guy was, super compulsive, like focused on organizing this by player, like a million and a half cards. And one thing you realize when you go through this amount of cards, or really any collection that you buy, you realize how often we were wrong. Like all of these players I'm looking at, I'm being reminded of all these guys that we thought were gonna be great at one time. And here we are looking at them and they're, they're worthless, right? I mean, Gary Anderson, and these are all Andersons, Mike Anderson, all the Andersons we were wrong with. Flipper Anderson, Eddie Anderson, see ya. This is a 350 card PSA order I submitted about 15 months ago that just came in. So this was a collection that I purchased about two years ago and it took me 
uh, a couple months to sort through these. It was a collection in Kansas City from a contractor who had uh, was working on a deal with a guy who passed away in the middle of their contract. And, and in his basement, he had his cards everywhere. And so he got connected to me through Jeff. Some of you may know him, works for Panini now, formerly Pat Geek. And he called me up and said, hey, there's a guy in Kansas City that you might be interested in buying a collection from. These are the cards from his collection that I, I sorted through to get, to get graded. For the most part, the excitement wore off about six months ago because these took forever. But I'll show you what I sent in this order. A lot of cards that you're probably familiar with if you're, from, if you're a collector like me in the early 90s. Anthony Hardway, Allen Iverson, LeBron James. I mean, come on, how iconic is that card? 93 finest Penny Hardway rookie. PSA 6, Kobe Bryant rookie. <laughs> I highly sought after PSA 6. This week was an absolute whirlwind. From enjoying the hobby community in Missoula, garage diving with Billy, and even finding time for some sorting. But one thing is for sure, whether you're collecting low dollar cards from the 80s or hunting down your next holy grail item, the journey of chasing cardboard is meant to bring you joy.